let's draw the same box in four different perspective views to see the difference between each type and when to use them. So let's start really simple with just one point perspective. I'm going to need my horizon line, which is just an imaginary horizontal line and just one vanishing point. To draw a box, I can draw a square pretty much anywhere and connect it to that vanishing point. Simple, right? Now I can draw the box below the horizon line so I can see its top surface or I can draw it above the horizon line. And again, connect the vanishing point to the corners. This is my vanishing point. So in this case, I can see its bottom surface. Or optionally, I can also draw it in a way that the horizon line cuts through the box. And in this case, I cannot really see the top or the bottom surface. Now with two-point perspective, it's gonna be similar. We'll just have two vanishing points and I'll draw them to the very edge. Again, I can draw it either under the horizon line, just the front edge and connect it to the vanishing points. This would be my VP left and VP right for vanishing point. And as you can see, this is a frontal view and this is a corner view. And again, I can draw the same box above the horizon line, which lets me see its bottom surface. Or again, I can have the box at the horizon line and I wouldn't be able to see the top surface or the bottom one. Now with the three point perspective, things get a little more interesting by one dimension. I'll draw my horizon line with two vanishing points again, just like with two point perspective. But in this case, I will have one more vanishing point outside of the horizon line, either very far up top, or in this case, let's draw it somewhere down below. And really the only difference this makes is that no lines in no directions are strictly horizontal or vertical anymore. Even my verticals will be converging to this third vanishing point, which is located usually somewhere pretty much in the middle between the two primary vanishing points on the horizon line. So let's draw a box in here. And if I start with the edge, I need to tilt the edge so that it goes to the third vanishing point. And then the rest is just like with two point perspective. And again, all my verticals will be converging to that third vanishing point down below. So we get a little bit more dynamic view of the box and the lines, edges, they all converge to one of the vanishing points. If you'd like to learn more about perspective drawing and see more examples and worksheets and different explanations and even how to populate your perspective sketches with vegetation and people and how to put it all together, you can check out my two books, Sketch Like an Architect, which are available as a PDF or as a printed paper bag, just like these ones. Now with the four point perspective, we're moving away from linear perspective into curvilinear. There are different ways how to go about this one, but I like to start with a simple, with a simple circle. Moving from linear to curvilinear perspective means that we are not using straight lines only in the perspective grid, but we're also introducing curves. And in this case, we still have the horizon line that can be the same, but the verticals coming from, this is VP one, two, three, and four, 
vertical lines between 3 and 4 will be curved, just like on a globe or on a sphere. And again, there are different ways how to go about this one. It can be just like a circle or sphere like this one. It can be more stretched in one or other direction, more like a banana or umbrella. But the point, the gist of it stays the same. So it's mimicking more of a fish eye effect. It's not as commonly used in architectural sketching, but it's great for comics or any type of visual that requires a little more dynamic view. So we have something like this. Now, if I want to draw a box in here, I would just follow for the start one of the curved ones for the front edge. And then I can basically draw a simple two point perspective. And then uh, for all the vertical edges, I would still follow the curved lines of the grid. Let me draw another example above the horizon line again. So there you have it. Same box in four different perspective views, showing examples how it can look below the horizon line, above or when it's crossing the horizon line. Hopefully this sheds more light on different perspective views, different number of primary vanishing points and when to use each type to really achieve the desired result.